Hello, my name is Daniel Morden. How to do? I am a storyteller and an author. I write books, I tell stories, but always I'm working with the old stories, the myths, the legends, the fairy tales, the folk tales from long, 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 long ago. And alongside all those kinds of stories comes the riddles. I love riddles. So in this brief little workshop, I'm going to talk you through a few of my favourite riddles in the hope that you get so excited about them that you have a go at writing one of your own. And then you can send it to me via the book show and I'll get to enjoy all your riddles. And that'll be fab. So. Here's a riddle for you. It's got four stiff standers, four dilly danders, two lookers, two crookers, and a wigwag. What is it? Four stiff standers, four dilly danders, two lookers, two crookers, and a wigwag. Often, the easiest part of a riddle is the final line, a wigwag. It wigs and wags, it waggles and wiggles. What could it be? It could be a tail, couldn't it? So, whatever the answer to this riddle is, possesses a tail. Stiff standers, what do you stand with? You stand with your legs. So the standers are legs, it's got four legs and a tail. Two lookers, what do you look with? eyes. So we know this creature now has four legs, a tail and two eyes. Two crookers. Well if the two lookers were the eyes, the two crookers must be the ears. Four dilly danders. What could four dilly danders be? They swing from side to side, they dilly and they dally as the creature walks around. The dilly danders well, I was telling this riddle in a school once, and I said, what do you think the four dilly-danders are? We've got the four stiff standers there, the legs, the two lookers, eyes, two crookers, ears, wigwag tail. What are the four dilly-danders? And the kids, they sat there and they scratched their heads, and then a girl said, I think I know what they are. And I said, tell me, what are the four dilly-danders? And she went, uh, uh, and she knew what they were, but she didn't know the word. So she said, the... The milk pistols. You see, the creature in the riddle is a cow. And the four dilly danders are the four teats of the creature's udder. The milk pistols. Give me all your grasps. So, there we are. There's the riddle. And now you can see the way a riddle works. In this particular case, each line describes a different part of the creature's body. But the poet didn't use the usual words. Because if, for example, you made up a riddle that went, I've got four legs, a tail, I chase mice, I drink milk, and I say meow, what am I? Too easy, isn't it? Straight away we know the answer. It's clearly a duck. So, the poet thought up new ways to describe the cow's body. Thought up new words in some instances. Didn't use any of the normal words like eyes or ears or a tail. Instead, invented little riddles for each different part of the creature's body. So, the poet thought, well, it's got legs. But I can't call them legs because that just gives away the answer straight away for that line. What does it do with it? Well, what does a cow do with its legs? It just stands around most of the time. It doesn't prance or gallop or jump. It just stands. So we'll call them standers. But that line's too short for standers. We need a describing word to go before standers. Well, what are its legs like? Are they long, like a giraffe? No. Are they bendy? No. They're stiff. 
stiff standards. Those two words go together because they start with the same sound. Alliteration. When several words start with the same sound. Stiff standards. Dilly standards. Alliteration, you see. So, I want you to have a go at thinking up a riddle about a creature that you know really well. Don't do an alien because we don't know what aliens look like. If you like dinosaurs, do a dinosaur one. If you've got a pet or a creature, an animal that fascinates you, have a go at inventing a riddle about that creature because you'll know loads about them. Each line describes a different part of the creature's body. Try to use alliteration. Keep the line short, but can you make as many words in that line as you possibly can start with the same sound. What about rhymes? Lookers, crookers, standers, danders. Rhymes help give the poem a strong rhythm. And if it's got a strong rhythm, that makes it memorable, makes it easier to say aloud. So, for example, let's go back to the cat riddle earlier on that I said was a duck because I was fibbing because I'm a storyteller and storytellers aren't to be trusted. Let's think about the cat riddle. I said four legs, a tail, I drink milk, I say meow, what am I? Too easy. What do cats like to do? They like to hunt. That's mostly what they like to do. So you could think up a riddle along those lines. What could its eyes be? Can't use the word eyes. Instead, we have to think of a new line. So if it's a hunter, maybe you could use that. Maybe you could call its eyes searchers or seekers. Or maybe seeking peepers. Or maybe, I don't know about your cat, but my cat is always staring. Looking without blinking. Staring. So maybe you could call its eyes starers. Paws have claws. Maybe you could come up with a line about its claws. How sharp they are. Knives. Needles. It's up to you. But a different line for each part of the creature's body. Five lines. Now, my friends, this brings me on to the shortest kind of riddle you can come up with. The kenning. A kenning is just two words that describe something in a new way, a kind of nickname. So the Vikings, the Anglo-Saxons loved kennings. We use actual kennings in everyday language. So, for example, you know a really tall building. What do we call it? Skyscraper. Huh? Skyscraper. Two words start with the same sound. Skyscraper. That is a kenning. Another kenning is handstand. When you're really trying hard to think of things in school, when you're all together and you're trying to come up with some great ideas, you call it a brainstorm. That's a kenning. Other kennings. My son, he loves to call coffee Jitter juice. Milk, you could call it moo A helmet, a skid lid. A pencil, a tail teller. A cat could be a mouse chaser. A dog could be a cat chaser. A motorbike could be an iron horse. These are all kennings. So, dilly danders, milk pistols. They're, they're also kennings. So can you come up with some kennings? Again, you can't use the usual words. 
to describe a pencil or a cup of coffee or a helmet. Because if you do, there's no mystery. You have to think of new ways to describe them. I hope these ideas have been helpful. And I hope maybe you'll come up with some kennings or some riddles and send them to me because I'd, I'd love to see them. And uh, uh, may, who knows, maybe in a few years time when I'm, we're visiting schools again in the old way, I'll be able to uh, share some riddles with you in person. And maybe the riddle I share with you will be the very one you sent to me. So good luck with your riddle writing. And I hope one day we will meet in person. Thank you again to the Children's Book Show for giving me the opportunity to speak to you today. And goodbye.